Hello, my name is Noah Sharon. I'm a composer and product designer here at Mantra. We just released two big updates, the first being Mandala 2.2, which is the latest version of our engine and introduces our Animod modulation system and a host of other functionalities and features. And the second being this new instrument, Galactron, which is a deep dive into all things early digital synthesis, FM synthesis, phase distortion, really great stuff. So I thought today we'd just do a casual video kind of walking through how we create a preset, especially using the new Animod modulation system so you can really see how that works. So here I just have the default patch. Nothing that interesting, but a good place to build off of. So the first thing I think I'm gonna do is change this sound. I'm envisioning making some sort of lush kind of pad sound with maybe some tape modulation and some space effects. So I'm gonna use this, uh, this sample here called Lush Pad at the start. So you can hear that's just a really warm, deep pad sound. First thing I'm gonna do is turn on the velocity to gain table. This will mean that as I play softer, the volume decreases and harder it goes up. I'm going to change the curve a little bit to emphasize that. Nice. Next, I'm going to go to our envelope and give it a bit more attack and a bit more release. A little less release. Cool. And I like this sound a lot, but in the context I'm going for, I think I want to take some of the bass away. So I'm just going to use a high pass filter here, cut it a bit, and then... Maybe take a bit of that low mid out too. Cool. I'm going to load up another sound. Probably another pad sound to blend it with. I like this unstable organ. Go to this sampler, do the same thing, velocity to gain. I'm gonna solo it so we can hear just this sound. You hear this is kind of like a lo-fi kind of organ sound. Nice, I'm gonna also increase the attack here. And release. I'm not going to do any EQing to this one. Cool, so I've got these two sounds. I can play with the balance of them. Cool. I'm going to go to the Matrix tab now, and I'm going to adjust how I can blend these with the axis. So you can see, by default, we have the Y-axis set up to gain on the first sampler. And I'm gonna kind of mimic that with the second sampler too. So we have immediately have something going there. So here I'm bringing up the Y axis with my MIDI controller here and the gain will go up as I bring it up. This is really the simplest way to use the axis, but it's nice kind of having that, that basis to work from. The next thing I think I'm going to do is actually use the x-axis to blend between these two sounds. So I'm going to make opposite curves and I'm going to bend them up a little bit to kind of have an equal power curve so it doesn't get quieter in the middle. Let's hear how that sounds. Cool. I'm going to bring the first sampler up a bit so it doesn't go all the way down. And to compensate, I'm going to bring this one down a bit. Cool, I'm pretty happy with that. I think the next thing I'll do is dive into our modulators and use them to do some subtle pitch modulation with the vibrato. This will give us kind of the, the tape effect. So the first thing I'm going to do is just solo this. set what I want my lowest vibrato setting to be. So this is going to be quite subtle. I'm going less than half a semitone here. 
Now I'm going to go to the Animod page. This is our new feature. I'm going to turn on the first modulator. I'm going to set it actually to the custom table shape. Bring the speed down a bit here. I really like this custom table shape because you can do really like natural modulations that wouldn't be found in a normal wave shape. So for this one, I'm going to create several little peaks at different amplitudes and different spaces between the waveform so that as it goes through this, you'll get these little dips in pitch. So let's hear how that sounds. that I can really emphasize how much the vibrato is working. So I like that, that's quite cool. But with um, Animod, we can also control the rate and intensity with the axes themselves. So I think with the Y axis, I'll actually increase the rate. So I'll bring this up to the, the highest I want it to go. And then as I bring the Y axis down, not only will it get quieter, but the, the modulation will get slower. Cool, so I'm just gonna attach that same modulation to the second sampler, I'll unsolo here. So as I blend. Okay, I think next let's go to some effects and see what we can do. So the first thing I want to do is add some sort of filter that we can work with dynamically. So I think for this I'll actually use a bandpass filter and I want it to just come on on that second sampler So as we go up the, the x-axis here. So I've got the dry wet table set to x, blending across. You see we have our cutoff frequency here. A resonance here. So I want it quite resonant. But instead of just setting our cutoff statically, I'm going to connect the cutoff as one of the macros up here and use a second modulator to, to alter it. I'm going to leave this uh, full range for now, but we'll probably slim it down later. Cool. So I'm going to turn on modulator two and go to it. I'm actually going to use the step modulation here, and I'm going to set it to a clock division. I think one eighth will be fine for now. So let's just draw something random here. And hear how that sounds. So that's kind of cool. I'm going to turn the smoothing down so you can really hear it stepping through. Bring it up. And I think I'll add um, re-trigger so it starts the same every time and I'll add some fade in so it doesn't go on the beginning of the note. I'll turn on legato so when I play chained notes it doesn't re-trigger. Cool, and I'm gonna go to that range now and make it so it doesn't go all the way up super high or all the way down. And remember, this is just on the this side of the x-axis. So as I blend. You get more and more of that, and I'm actually going to make this more gradual, give it an exponential curve here. Okay, naturally, the next thing we need is some reverb. So with Galactron, we've got the, the solar verb, which is 
this really lush modulated verb with some saturation too. So I'm gonna set that up on the Z axis. Let's go full wet for now so we can really hear how it sounds. Instant planetary music, right? So I'm gonna turn up flare now so we can get some of that pitch modulation effect. I'm gonna turn the low time up too. Here, flare adds some saturation and grit to the sound as well. Now, as I fade up the x axis, you'll hear the reverb kind of kick in more. Nice. So, I don't think I'll go full wet, but I think I want like 60%, like pretty full of reverb. And I'll give it a bit of a curve there too. Maybe a bit of volume compensation. Cool, I actually want the pitch modulation deeper now that I have the reverb too. can actually control the speed and intensity of this one too. So I think I'll chain it to the Z axis. So as you bring up the reverb, you actually get higher intensity of the filter modulation. Settle our down here. Nice. I think I'm almost there. The last thing I want to do is maybe play with adding one more sound in here. Maybe let's try neon. I'll solo it for now. Okay, nice. I like that. Bring the reverb down so we can fully hear it. Add that velocity to gain, it's gonna make it quite dramatic here. Add that same pitch modulation. Maybe up an octave. I'm gonna emphasize the attack of it. But still give some sustain. Add the release. I think for this one, I'll add some sampler level effects. So the first will be the delay. We have this Bucket Brigade delay for Galactron, which is cool and lo-fi. Turn the mod depth down. A little longer. Nice, I'll bring that up with the Z-axis too. Get some compensation here. Give it an opposite curve so you can still hear it on the lower too. Nice, I like that. I think the second thing I'll add here is an auto panner. So you have it kind of floating around you. And I'll just make that on all the time. Slower and less deep. Let's go to the matrix page. Let's make that also be affected by the y-axis here. And let's keep it just consistent on the x-axis. Let's hear how that sounds all together. Excuse my playing, I'm no keyboardist. 
cool. I'm liking this. Just the last thing I want to do is maybe on this last sampler we added, make it a little less dry. So I think I'll make that delay kind of always there. I'm going to turn it up a little bit too. And I think I want it so that there's still some reverb even with it totally off too. So I'm actually going to add the spring reverb we have here. This is really cool convolution based reverb sampled from an ARP 2600 that has kind of a grittiness to it right away. So I'm going to attach that to the z-axis just up a bit, but bring it up on the lowest level too. Bring it up a bit. Turn the high-pass filter down. Nice, I'm liking that. Okay, let's hear it all together. Okay, great. I think I'm going to call it for today. And the last thing we could do, obviously, is go in and name our axes and save it with whatever name we want. Uh, but I won't bore you with that. So yeah, thanks for sticking with me here. And hopefully this is something we'll do more, kind of showing you how we build presets, showing you kind of the inner workings of the engine that you might not be so familiar with. But yeah, thanks. <laughs>